In this video, me and Paul C from WP Tuts will share tips about starting a WordPress web design business. And in part one of a three part series, we'll talk about working on your skills. Hello and welcome to the Digital Alchemist podcast. I'm your host, Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist. And today is episode one of a three part series where me and Paul C will share tips about starting a WordPress web design business. So make sure to subscribe and smash the notification bell to get notified when new episodes come up as well as new podcasts. Because yes, this format may become a regular show on the channel. Paul C to me is the content beast. So I'd like to welcome Paul. Hi, Paul, and thank you for being on the show. Hey, it's my pleasure, Kay. Good to be here. It's really a pleasure. And for those of you who don't know, me and Paul have been talking for a few months. So it's the first time we do a video together, but we enjoy just, you know, speaking about WordPress stuff and life. So, like I said, today we'll be talking about starting a WordPress web design business. And the first point that we want to talk about today is working on your skills. So, uh, Paul, what do you think about that? When you want to start a WordPress web design business, um, what's it take on the skill side of things? Well, I think you need to, first of all, kind of set yourself apart from the typical bedroom designer that, you know, learns a little bit about WordPress, watches a couple of tutorials like yourself and myself make, and then start getting out there and touting themselves as being the full package. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize is that there's a lot more to being a web designer, whether it's a freelancer, you know, part of an agency, whatever. It's not just about having an eye for design. There's so many more skills that go on behind the scenes that I think a lot of people are kind of missing out on when they do call themselves a web designer. And I'm sure, like I say, you could attest to this, the number of times that you've probably been taken on board by a client to clean up someone else's work because it's not to the standard that they've expected it to be. And like I say, I just think there's a lot more underlying skills that really need to be embraced before you can start asking people to give you money to do that kind of job. Yeah, I agree. Um, and we've talked about this before we started the stream, but w one thing I'd like to stress is that when people want to work on their skills, they sh should start in the right order because I see many people, they want to dive straight into WordPress and it's great. I mean, WordPress is great. It's really a great opportunity. But I still think you should learn basic HTML and CSS. It's not going to take you more than a month, even if you spend a few hours uh, per week. And it's really going to help you when things go south because you're going to get bugs, whatever happens. And if you need to ask someone each and every time you have an issue, I mean, it's going to be hard to run a business, especially at the beginning when you start on your own. So I think it's definitely HTML, CSS, in my opinion, is the minimum. Now, I often talk about this, but uh, I should work on my JavaScript skills. I don't know about you. <laughs> uh, where do you stand with JavaScript? It, look, it's one of those things, that, like, like you say, I think having a basic understanding at least of, of what's going on behind the scenes not only is good for you, but when you are using a tool like WordPress as the sort of core of your business, having an understanding of what's going on and how you can just tweak things, how you can make things a little bit more unique, and not have a hundred percent reliance upon tools like, you know, Elementor, like Divi, those, those kinds of page builders, having an understanding of what's going on. So then, like you say, when you are looking at a problem, at least you know where to look to find a solution to it. So HTML, CSS as a bare minimum, JavaScript, yes, absolutely very useful. And I think if you can get to understand any kind of programming language, when you move over between the different languages like JScript, you know, JavaScript and things like that, you have a better understanding of the structure of how all these things kind of work. Now, I wouldn't call myself an expert by any stretch of the imagination with tools like this. And I think the reliance upon them these days is a lot less than it probably was five or 10 years ago. But I think it's still good to have just even just an understanding of what's going on behind the scenes just to make your life a lot easier and when you're looking for, you know, getting some help with a problem, if you can at least speak to the developers, the technical support, and have some idea of what it is you're talking about, it's going to make your life and their life considerably easier to try to find a solution to whatever the problem is that you're encountering. 
Yeah, exactly. And I think you and I come from a, an age where we, we, we learn to code and do many things manually. And I remember when I, I was first getting started with PHP and MySQL and trying to understand, and I often talk about this, but uh, we had to learn with books. So I had a book that thick and I was trying to complete a project and I felt like I was dumb because I couldn't complete it. And I tried it. I don't know how many times I tried just to find out three months later that there were some mistakes in the book. And by the time the author put it online, but the whole time I thought I couldn't make it where when actually it was just a mistake. So it was really painful. And I mean, nowadays you can uh, just hop on to YouTube and find a video, find a tutorial and create, you know, a simple administration platform, just the bare minimum. But you're just going to understand what's the relationship between PHP and MySQL. I'm not talking about becoming a full stack developer because most of my audience and your audience too, I think, are not really into that. But yeah. um, knowing what works behind the scenes really helps. Like, for example, today when I was using Jet Engine today because I need to deliver a project and I had a hard time trying to uh, show some results based on the custom taxonomy. Well, the fact that I know uh, how PHP and MySQL works, I managed to find uh, where the issue was, you know, instead of going to a forum, asking people and spending hours or days trying to understand uh, what happens. And I'm not a full stack developer, but I just understand how it works. So I think um, we have a similar opinion on that. I think it's just going to help you become a much better WordPress freelancer um, the more you know. But of course, it's really overwhelming when you look at all the languages. So don't be discouraged if you're watching this, just the bare minimum HTML, CSS, and then try to understand how JavaScript, PHP, and MySQL work. And if you like it, then you can push it a little bit further, but you don't really have to. To add on to that, it's also a good idea to have an understanding of how database structures work. Because if you follow my yeah. tutorials, one of the comments that kind of comes up time and time again is that I take different tools and I combine them together to create something that is maybe a little unique like, for example, the the front end uh, dashboard that I created recently that, you know, even some of the developers over at Elementor wanted ha uh, have access to that so they could see how I'd done it. But that's because I kind of come from a background of developing my own CMS using tools like Dreamweaver and some of the rapid application yep. sort of tools that you had back in the day. So having an understanding of how these things integrate, how they talk to each other, just makes the whole process of creating something that may be, you know, at first sort of uh, impression could just be incredibly complicated. But when you understand how those tools work together, how the database works together, it means that you can then push things beyond. You can create some more sort of unique uh, projects with the tools that you have on hand because you kind of know a little bit better what you can do, what you can achieve, and how they'll integrate with each other. I think that's a good thing to know as well as the code side of things. So you can get a little more creative with the tools you have on hand. True. And um, to get really practical, if you want to better your skills, my advice would be to create real fake projects. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you have a real project, that, that's even better. But sometimes you just don't have a project, you don't have a client because you're just trying to better your skills so that you can get some clients. So what I used to do, I used to imagine some projects. I used to ask around, uh, I don't know, I used to ask in, in my family, okay, what would you like? What do you need? What could I create? And then I was trying to gather some ideas. And then when I had a real project in mind, then it's really different. You know, many tutorials uh, here on YouTube are great, but sometimes they lack the, the, you know, the real life factor. So when you have a deadline, when you have a real brief, you need to achieve something. At least for me, that's always the, the best way I've learned. So I could try to learn with a book. I could try to learn, you know, with a theoretical course. But when I really had to achieve something, that's when I made giant leaps. And I've, um, I've actually advised that to some people who were getting started. And they told me they had a really good return with that um, method. So one way you could do it is ask a friend or family, like I said, or maybe you can take it a little bit further if you if you're confident and maybe you have someone in your family that has a company, uh, you can go you can go and ask them. 
Now, we're not talking about, uh, once again, crazy complicated websites, but another thing you could do is just try to find a company that has, you know, a website that doesn't look that good uh, so that you can recreate it. But we'll talk about that in, in, um, in a moment. So, Paul, what would be your way of growing your skills um, the more efficient way? What I would say is, like you just said, it's good to get real world examples that you can work on. And there are pl plenty of sort of small companies, organizations, charities, different things that you could talk to. Like I say, it could be a friend of a friend, could be a relative, could just be someone you know from you know a group of friends. Use that as a good starting point to find out how it, it is working with clients. But the one thing I would highly stress, even if you're working for zero dollars, zero pounds, put a contract into place, outline what you're going to deliver to them, outline timescales so you know exactly what's going on and they know what they're going to get. Then there's no surprises if something takes a nasty turn, takes a turn for, you know, goes in a direction you may not have thought. That is something that I think is good practice no matter what the scenario is. I'm Casino and I approve this message. <laughs> 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 this is something I talk about all the time. You need a contract and you need to make sure, but we'll talk about that um, a little bit later, but you really need to make sure that people know the value that you're giving to them. So I hope that you got value out of this. And don't forget, this was episode one of a three-part series where we talk about starting a WordPress web design business. So make sure to subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you get notified when new podcast episodes come up. Oh, by the way, make sure you check the WP Tuts YouTube channel. You won't regret it. Oh, and if you want a killer branding for you or your clients, I created a brand guidelines template that you can download on my website. Initially, it was created for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. So thank you for watching. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success.